Hello and welcome to News Center with me, Parikshit Luthra. The big story. The Axiom 4 space mission carrying Indian astronaut and group captain Shubhanshu Shukla is on its way to the International Space Station. The mission took off from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida's Cape Canaveral. The mission had faced multiple delays because of weather and technical issues. In his first message from the mission, group captain Shubhanshu Shukla said, and I quote, this is not the start of my journey, but the start of India's human space program, end of quote. Group Captain Shukla becomes the first Indian in space since Rakesh Sharma in 1984. He will also become the first Indian to visit the International Space Station. Group Captain Shukla is being accompanied by astronauts from the United States, from Hungary and Poland. They will be spending two weeks at the International Space Station, which is a permanent research facility orbiting the Earth at an altitude of 400 kilometers. Group Captain Shukla's parents watched the liftoff from their residence in Lucknow. From uh, President Murmu to Prime Minister Modi, political leaders across party lines extended their wishes to the mission. Three, two, one, ignition and lift off. <laughs> नहीं हूं मैं आप सबके साथ हूं आइए हम सब मिलकर भारत की ह्यूमन स्पेस प्रोग्राम की जर्नी की शुरुआत करें धन्यवाद जय हिंद जय भारत बहुत बड़ा गर्व है हमारे लिए आज का दिन जो इतिहास में याद रखा जाएगा बात अभी हुई थी अभी सुबह हुई थी निकलने के पहले बात किया था हम लोगों से कि मैं निकल रहा हूं मामा बात करके गए हैं आज बात करके गए हैं आशीर्वाद लेके गए हैं दही पेड़ा खिलाया वो खा के गए दूर से टू द क्रू गॉड स्पीड एंड Spend as much time as possible to look out of the window. The Axiom 4 mission will take 28 hours to reach the International Space Station. The spacecraft is expected to dock tomorrow afternoon, India time. The mission is being carried out using a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. It has completed 16 missions so far, carrying astronauts to space. It has a perfect safety record. Axiom 4 is a big step towards India's Gaganyaan mission, which aims to send a crewed mission to space. ISRO is coordinating with NASA and Captain Shukla will be conducting crucial research to uh, facilitate the Gaganyaan mission. So what exactly will Group Captain Shukla be doing in space? He will study the cognitive effects of screen use, microbial adaptation, muscle atrophy and crop resilience in microgravity, among other things. To take this forward, I'm now joined by a stellar panel of experts. We are joined by former project director at ISRO, Raju Garudachar, and the president of India's SATCOM Industry Association, Mr. Subha Rao. He's also the CMD at Anand Tech. Uh, which designs systems and subsystems from ISRO. Also on the program with us is uh, Mr. Somak uh, Ray Chaudhary, who is a professor of physics at Ashoka University. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today. Uh, professor Subarao, if I can uh, begin with you, a big day indeed for India. Could you uh, give us a sense of what really means for Shubhanshu Shukla, Group Captain Shukla, and also India's own space program? Yeah, thank you. In fact, today is a great day for India that, you know, Guru Captain Shobha Shukla going into the space, that is a great day and a very, very memorable day for us. The experiments that you're going to conduct are going to be extremely helpful for India in terms of growing the seeds in the microgravity area and also looking at some other experiments like, you know, modules related activity and also touch screen related activity, which I mentioned just now. So like this, you know, very many experiments is going to conduct on that. This is something very prior to our own Gaganayan program tomorrow. And our Gaganayan program tomorrow is going to be something very, very extraordinary program. And for this, Subhasha class program today helps to lead towards that in the part. And it's a great day that we had it today. And we must all Indians, 140 crore population of Indians, all Indians, Bharatiyas, wish very good best wishes to Sudan Shukla. And we also join. Thank you. Right. Uh, Dr. Dr. Raju, uh, 
if I can come to come to you at this point, could you give us a sense of how complicated was this mission? Uh, the next 24 hours, of course, important because they have to reach the International Space Station. The lead up, we saw a number of delays, glitches taking place. Uh, could you give us a sense of what must have gone into it, why these delays happened, and what makes this so complicated? See, any space launch is unique in itself. No one launch is repeatable in another way. Therefore, one has to take zero defect policy. There was some kind of an alert when there was a leakage of oxy liquid oxygen, and certainly it's a very dangerous thing. It may cause explosion, and we don't want to take anybody want doesn't nobody wants to really take risk because when human lives are involved. So this happened several times. And I think they have repaired everything. That's how it got delayed. Secondly, there was a last minute problem like wind. Wind has to be favorable for the launch. Normally, during the in the launch, launch pad area, we'll have a wind profiler. It'll tell you the direction and the magnitude of wind blowing. How is it helping the launch? The rocket has to take the correct angle for launching. So this is another thing. Apart from the meteorological condition, which are not a major problem, however, the, the one has to keep track of meteorological condition, even though it is raining, but wind is a major, uh, you know, spoil short, which can have trouble the launch uh, event. So these are the two major, uh, the, apart from the oxygen leakage and all that, there are six different reasons. There are, we don't know, what the details of those, but what is reported is that there was a leakage in the oxygen uh, container, and certainly right. it's increased. Those are the major, uh, major defects, major impediments okay. that delayed the mission. Thank you. All right. Uh, let me also get in Professor Somak Ray Chaudhary. Uh, Professor Chaudhary, there are seven India-specific experiments that. Uh, Group Captain Shubhanshu Shukla will be working on. Could you give us a sense of the importance of these experiments for India? So, um, experiments like these, these are biological experiments mostly, uh, but there's some technological ones as well, which have been done in microgravity experiment uh, uh, environments over the years. But um, in specifically this time, there are some Indian experiments that have gone up. Uh, particularly with Indian PIs from Indian institutes and labs that uh, um, Shubhanshu is going to um, uh, is going to perform in zero gravity. Uh, some of the experiments are like the, as follows. For example, there are uh, experiments to do with uh, cyanobacteria, for example. These bacteria are very prolific in producing very interesting compounds on Earth, but they can produce, for example, out of waste material, produce oxygen or produce uh, 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 some chemicals that can get rid of waste material uh, that are produced in a closed environment. So these things are very important in the future when we will have our own space station and we would want to generate oxygen or uh, actually break down waste materials within the space station and how these bacteria work. Um, is very important for us to study. And so an Indian experiment has gone up, which is looking at that. There are other things, for example, looking at how uh, muscles um, behave in zero gravity. As you remember, when, uh, when Sunita Williams and, and, and uh, co came back, they were very unable to stand on earth as they landed back. When you spend a lot of time in zero gravity, your muscles change in a very different way. So this is, there's an experiment that looks at how muscles behave uh, on, on long term in, in, in a zero gravity situation. This is also very important for us to understand, even without astronauts being involved, as aging processes, uh, progresses, we want to know how um, right. muscles change, right? So that kind of stuff. And the, another thing they're doing also is looking at food stuff. In, in, these, uh, okay. in these environments. Uh, they, they have taken up some Indian foods like sprouts of Indian beans and things like that and how they grow in zero gravity. So there are some very Indian specific okay. experiments this time. 
All right. Uh, so that, of course, will be uh, interesting. Let me go back to Professor Subarao at this point. Professor Subarao, I think one thing that a, a, that a layman in India who's watching television very proudly would like to know what uh, group captain Shubhanshu Shukla and the other astronauts in the Dragon spacecraft would be doing over the next 15 days or so. Could you give us a sense of what's their average day going to look like? Yeah. See, as my predecessor mentioned just now, about various experiments that are going to be conducted in space. No, one important thing is, you know, they carried something like a seeds of the green gram. So that, that uh, pulses, whether they can grow them in microgravity. Because in future, when you have get into moon or Mars or any other location, how do we grow food for ourselves on that? That's important. So towards that, the experiment is being done. But more than these experiments, anything part of it, anyway, that can be done. But it's more inspirational for the Indians that we also can do. So that's what is going to be the message that uh, he, Subhan Shukla is going to give to all Bharatiyas, in, to all Indians on this now. That's the most important part of it. Right. I just want to recall, recall like, that when we landed on the moon, on the South Pole, so it's not a success of just a program alone. How it inspires the entire Indians that we also can do, we'll do. We can become the superpower in this area. That is what the message that this is going to give to all of us. And that is what we're going to have and the inspirational one from us, from him. So we wish right. success. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Uh, Professor, uh, Professor Chaudhary, if I were to ask you before we move on to, uh, to our other guests, what would be in this for India's private sector? Currently, we've got a, a supervisory and a space promotion body called InSpace that has been formed by the government of India. It works under ISRO. The, uh, the task there is to achieve a $44 billion space economy in the next four years and tap the potential in the space sector be a supplier to the world, be a manufacturer for the world as well. What will be the learnings for the private sector from this exercise? We are a late entrant into this uh, international space uh, uh, industry. Um, India is one of the uh, five major superpowers. And uh, it's now a, a $500 billion industry in which uh, uh, India plays a very small percentage, 2 to 3% of the market uh, comes to Indian companies. And that's because we've just started off. I think one of the major things is to actually establish credibility of the Indian uh, space industry in the international market so that we can bid for international projects. Uh, we can see that in many other international um, uh, collaborations in physics and, uh, um, and other, other subjects um, that we are now collaborating uh, with the international projects and Indian, Indian industries coming in. So that's one major thing is to learn how this being a completely private endeavor of Axiom and, and collaboration with SpaceX and our astronaut is being involved in it, um, to see how that works in this environment and learn for the Indian space industry when it gets involved in Gaganyaan, when it gets involved in, the, uh, in our Antarik space station to build that, those things for ourselves in addition as this uh, space sector grows, um, there will be quite a lot of international um, um, you know, tenders that our companies, Indian space companies, will now um, uh, you know, apply for. Uh, and so not right. just the big ones, even the small micro satellites, the nano satellites and things like that, that payloads that will be built, they're also built by some of these companies that in space is now uh, helping to generate within the country all of this. Right. We'll have to learn from the American and, uh, and Japanese and European uh, companies working in the sector. And that's only when okay. they expand from the 2% right. you're talking about to the level you're talking about, the 10% level. Okay. Let me get in a question with Dr. Garuda Char. Dr. Dr. Raju, I'd like to ask you about ISRO's contribution to the Axiom 4 program and the learnings that they would like to take away from this collaboration. Hey, we have learned a, um, okay. We have learned a lot about uh, launch vehicles as well as satellite. So this is one step more with the class of uh, quality of the equipment, quality of the uh, not only the design 
the quality has to be at most that is zero defect policy so the quality improvement is very important in this kind of a human in space programs and we will have, we will learn a lot by doing this kind of a careful controlled you know experiment and uh, the, even the development of a similar thing bharati antariksha station which will be something similar to iss so we should be in a position to repeat replicate iss kind of you know uh, station in space so that we can be independent it is our atmanirbhar effect that we want to do our own mission okay we have to have collaborate because space industry is not Uh, you know it's a very expensive so we have to collaborate that is one part at the same time mm. we have to we can really contribute by designing our own uh, antariksh ground station similar to iss and okay we, our, okay that's the main uh, question thank you all right uh, uh, we've run out of time but i'd really like to thank uh, dr raju professor super rao and uh, professor choudhury for joining us on the program it's been a fantastic discussion and uh, we really wish uh, group captain shubhanshu shukla the other astronauts and everyone involved with axiom 4 all the very best and we wish it all the success over the next fortnight we're taking a short break but when we return we will be focusing on the middle east uh, the ceasefire between israel and iran is holding for now i speak to israel's ambassador to india ruben azar for a status check on uh, where things are right now.